Okay, we have a knife to look at here, and uh, what's most noteworthy about it, it's a great knife, I love it just on its own merits, but uh, what's most noteworthy about it is the former owner, and this was Steve McQueen's hunting slash bowie knife. And if you don't know who Steve McQueen is, uh, number one, shame on you, uh, but number two, go see his movies. Uh, Steve McQueen is one of the most enduring Hollywood icons out there. The Internet Movie Database, IMDb, actually says that he was the most popular movie star in the world at his height, which I did not realize. Uh, the other main thing about him, you know, he was a leading man, 60s, 70s, action movie kind of guy, uh, Charles Bronson, Clint Eastwood, that kind of thing. But what really sets him apart is he has this enduring kind of cool, hip factor, just one of those celebrities where that doesn't fade at all. In fact, at one point, his, uh, his nickname was the King of Cool. Now, we could classify this as a sheath knife because any knife that has to be held in a sheath so that you don't cut yourself is a sheath knife. But what it really is, is a bowie knife. And that's a complicated subject that we're not going to try to solve here, not for a second, all right? So for you knife experts out there, uh, you know, we can do that elsewhere. The bottom line here is that, you know, any kind of really large American hunting knife, you know, about this size, big, broad, with that clipped point is going to be called a bowie knife. And this is a beautiful one, I think. I love Bowie knives. It's the quintessential American weapon, you know, leaving guns aside. Certainly, and it absolutely dominates uh, American knife making. And yes, I pronounce it Bowie, not Bowie. Uh, either is acceptable, and there's no definitive version of what it should be, which is real indicative of the history of these knives in general. Tons of controversy, shrouded in mystery, and that's just the way it is, which is probably part of what makes them interesting. So, let's take a look at this one in particular. Starting from left to right, you can see the brass pommel, right? The pommel's there at the very end. And you can't quite tell from here, but it's asymmetrical, which I thought was a nice touch. You'll see that later. Then it's got a wasted grip, right? It kind of slims down and then expands back up. And then there's a brass guard, which obviously matches the pommel. And then there's the blade, which is the classic Bowie outline. So what it basically is is a big <laughs> blade, butcher style, you know, kind of looks like a giant kitchen knife to a certain extent, as opposed to like a stiletto type blade. Uh, and it has that clipped point. If you don't know what a clipped point is, look at the upper right of this blade, and now you do. Uh, and it's kind of a complex blade as well, which I like. You see this on knives, a lot of people don't appreciate this. I mean, I would count like seven individual surfaces across that knife, including both sides and the spine. You see the contours there, and how, you know, the cutting edge is kind of a, dis a distinct plane as opposed to the clip point, and look at the clip point, it's not a simple matter of like, it wasn't just like a bite was taken out of it by a machine, do you know what I mean? It has its own kind of miniature surface on there, with another one on the corresponding side, which we'll see later, to form an edge on that side as well. See, that's why the light plays off of it in so many different ways, uh, even just looking at it from this one view. And even from this distance, you can see that this thing was used... Uh, you know, it did not just sit on a shelf or it had scabbard, so I don't know if he used it for hunting or what or just messing around. But even from here, we can see the, you know, the little scratches and nicks from being drawn out a bunch of times and maybe just being mixed in with some other uh, equipment. It's a great looking knife overall. I love the color palette that they went with. And this is the thing about Bowie knives, they're so big that the worker, the, you know, the knife maker really has a, like a large canvas to work with. So even though it's a relatively consistent form, it, it's open to just endless interpretation. And let's focus on the handle here. You can see up close the pins, again, I think they look great. Notice that they, uh, they match the outline of the wasted grip. So there really is some thought into the aesthetics around where those were placed. The scales that we're looking at, and they're kind of, you know, the part that you hold on to and in between the pommel and the, and, and the grip, when they're kind of put together sandwich-like, then they're scales. And these are ivoroid, so kind of fake ivory, which I think is better than real ivory. And uh, that yellowish color works really well with the brass as well. But I thought that was interesting. And if you saw one of my older videos, uh, then you know what leatheroid is. So that concept of taking a natural substance, sticking OID on it, and uh, naming the synthetic version... Uh, was still around in the 20th century. So here's somebody scratched MB, it looks like, on the blade. We'll never know why. Interesting, another sign that this thing was used and, and carried around. So who knows, maybe uh, Steve McQueen himself did that. Let's look at the blade now from this view and both sides of it. So you can see the wear and tear there, uh, especially here closer to the, uh, the camera. But the main thing is, look at the shape. This is again that kind of flattened diamond cross-section that I've talked about before with other weapons. But it's not perfectly symmetrical, right? You see kind of the 
the ridge in almost the middle, and from there, it, the blade slopes down in both directions. You'd have that slope heading down in both directions with a double-edged weapon. It's the same design here, but, you know, the backside is actually not sharp. And here you can see that kind of ridge, and it gives you a much better idea of where it actually begins sloping down. So you have this broad cutting surface. And then the part above that, so on the right side of that, that dividing line, that's really providing strength. And in the case of this knife, it's quite a bit of strength because of the really broad spine that we're about to see. And there it is. Look how thick that is. So as any of you know, if you're into knives, that's really thick. It's part of the reason this thing weighs so much. So it feels great in your hand. I wouldn't want to have to use it all day. It wouldn't be ideal. Just, you know, thinking the abstract here uh, as a fighting knife. But that was always the thing with Bowie's. They're kind of unnecessarily big. That was really just the fashion. Uh, but look at that thing. It's incredibly sturdy. And you can see, again, the complexity of the shape as that comes into what we're seeing here on the upper left, which is where the clip begins. It's also the false edge. This is a single-edged knife. A false edge is something like what we're looking at here on the top half, and it might or might not be sharp. Either way, you can call it a false edge because it's not the main cutting one. This one, like I said, is sloped, so it does kind of form an edge on the upper portion. In theory, that would make you know, a backward slash kind of possible. That's maybe a little bit more myth than reality. I, I don't know. I'm not a knife fighting expert. But it would, in theory, a little more solid ground, increase efficiency during a thrust. This point in particular, notice it flares up a little bit. And again, this kind of outline open to endless interpretation. So they don't always do that. And I think it's a nice visual touch. Uh, not much of a utilitarian purpose, I wouldn't think. And there, just to give you an idea of how big this thing actually is, it's a monster. Uh, that and the scabbard, you know, just kind of held it up on my on my hip, uh, and you'd know that you were wearing this for sure. I almost feel like a like a bolo knife or a, a small machete or something. The other thing you can see from this view is where the clip begins. You know, the clipped point. You can see when it begins descending, and that's totally up to the maker. There's no hard and fast rule at all about that. So he put it pretty far up the blade on this one. It starts early, and that is it for this guy. So not only was Steve McQueen a uh, kind of a blue-chip Hollywood legend, but he had good taste in knives as well. Thanks.